What's up, guys? Welcome to another edition of Pro Wrestling Pulse. I'm my partner, Ryan. I am J-Man. Um, you might be a tidbit surprised um, that we are doing this video right now, uh, because the last time that you saw us um, for our two-hour epic finale to our Exile series, um, right. go check that out if you have not checked out that entire series of videos. Uh, we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, we were actually filming this on the day of SummerSlam. So our exile is over, um, ending tonight at SummerSlam. We're going to watch that show, and that'll be the first, um, at least WWE side of things, because this is an NXT show, but WWE side of things that we have um, watched a full show of since Money in the Bank uh, back in June. Um, but we did not talk about this NXT show. Um, so Ryan came over last night, um, Saturday night, and we were going to just watch some New Japan stuff. Uh, there was some stuff from the G1 that we uh, wanted to check out. Um, we checked out the... Uh, the third uh, Okada and Omega match, which is some good stuff. Um, we watched the finals of the G1 Climax with uh, my boy Naito and Omega, which was some great stuff. Um, some other random stuff here and there. Um, we were checking out, and we were contemplating, because Ryan texted me, he's like, should we take a risk, you know, seeing something that's going to be going down for SummerSlam and check out the TakeOver show? Um, I've thought about this, um, about wanting to see this show, because I know both of us were on the same page as, like, as soon as SummerSlam ends, we're going to want to know what happened on that TakeOver show because usually TakeOver is some good shit. Um, so we were like, fuck it. We'll go ahead and watch it. Um, we ended up ruining pretty much um, at least two of the title matches that we're going to be seeing. At least one for sure. We know the participants in the WWE title match um, being Nakamura and Jinder Mahal. Fuck. Yeah. Um, and the there's going to be a fatal four-way for the Universal title. Um, so we don't know the participants except for Lesnar, obviously, because he's champion, but we don't know the rest of them. All the other matches, we still do not know about SummerSlam. We don't know any of the storylines, any yeah. of the angles, so we at least still are going into this um, with a pretty um, unknown as far as what's going on, except for that match, which uh, we saw Mauro Ronaldo on the show, which was a surprise to us, probably not surprised to you guys, yeah. but again, uh, if you didn't follow the Exile series, we have not been watching wrestling, WWE wrestling, um, for two months. So we haven't caught up with any of the NXT stuff. But we wanted to take a, a shot and check this show out, and um, uh, we're very glad that we did um, with, with the outcome that we got. So um, this is going to be our NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 um, review. Um, <clears throat> we were excited, you know, as soon as we, we turned it on and we saw the fresh feel and we saw the vibe of how things were. NXT always has that vibe. Triple H, I, I just can't say enough about how much I fucking love Triple H and how he handles this fucking product. Um, starts out with a live performance by fucking Code Orange, which is crazy. A fucking new up-and-coming hardcore band that they have do a live performance at an NXT show. Their music that they have on NXT is always great. Um, it's just fucking awesome to see stuff like that. And um, the, the production level and things that Triple H puts into the NXT product is some great shit. But um, we did saw, see Mauro Ronaldo. That was kind of a surprise. They've had like guest announcers like Corey Graves, JR, um, did they have anybody else? I think those are the two kind of mm -hmm. surprise yeah. announcers that they have in there. That was kind of cool to see that stuff. But uh, we're fresh and rejuvenated, and we wanted to check out this show. Um, so we're going to get this kicked off. Uh, the first matchup, we had um, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano going up against Andrade Cien Almas. Yeah, um, both these guys can work. Uh, this was great. This was a really good opener. This was a good match. Um, got a decent amount of time. The crowd was super into this. Uh, the crowd loves Johnny Gar Johnny Gargano. He's a uh, I've been a fan of him for for many years. I've seen him on the indie circuit and seen him at a couple of indie events here in St. Louis. Um, great guy. He looks to be in great shape. Yeah. Um, Almas was in is in great shape too. They they both these guys are great. Uh, when I first started watching um, uh, seeing Almas, I didn't really care for him. I thought he was kind of generic and, and lame. Uh, they put this some girl with him. I don't know what her name. Selena something. Yeah, we don't Vega know. or don't Selena Vega. I don't know. I can't remember her name. It works though. But it works. And um, him as a heel is good, and uh, he, he he's great. Both these guys are great here, and this match itself was good. I don't know if there was a storyline going into this. Obviously, we didn't we didn't, we didn't know. Um, uh, Champa was not at present at the show, so um, the last time I saw Gargano was at the Takeover show where Champa destroyed him. Yeah. So. I don't know what's going on with him, if he's hurt or if something else is going on, but um, this was great. This is a good opener. Yeah, this is outstanding stuff. It's a really good opener. Um, the crowd was hot for it as, um, yeah, they, they did their typical New York premature ejaculation um, at the beginning of a show um, and then kind of tapered off throughout the rest of it. Um, but, yeah, this is some good stuff, good work. Johnny Gargano, like Ryan said, looked in just amazing shape, just looked awesome. 
Um, don't know what's going on. It looks like there's some sort of continuation thing with Champa. They that they had that chick that was with Almas throw in a DIY T-shirt, and he was kind of looking at it, yeah. like kind of like carrying over the feud with um, with Champa. But uh, we, me and Ryan were talking. Adriana or uh, Andrade Almas or whatever. Um, he is super underrated. Um, yeah. I mean, nobody talks about this guy, but he is a great worker. His his gimmick is very is very kind of cheesy and very um, generic, um, but he's an awesome worker. Um, he's a hella talented guy, and he's a great piece for NXT where you don't where you have a lot of you know you have a lot of name kind of guys, but you you need those kind of guys that could go in there and maybe not be the name, but still put on great fucking matches. And this guy can do it. He's gone in, gone in there with a lot of guys and put on some really quality stuff. I think he had a match with uh, Roderick at the last takeover that we watched. Um, that was, good, that yeah. was fucking great as well. And I think that was like an opener. He's yeah, he's like a, an opener stud. Um, but this is some really great stuff. I'd say it's probably maybe outside of the women's title match, probably the best fucking match on the show. Um, was some really good stuff here. They've worked a, a good style, a good fast paced. Uh, matchup had some good chemistry um and almost getting the win after um they threw in the shirt and did the whole tease with chompa thing um with that that chick that threw in that shirt but good stuff kind of surprising not to see gargano get the win there but kind of carrying over that feud um fuck uh next matchup as soon as they had they had code orange playing um the beginning and they were showing like promo packages and stuff like that me and ryan were saying how it kind of reminds us of like wrestlemania 19 when limp biscuit played at the beginning of the show um and just had that kind of cool yeah. thing where they're showing promo packages they did it at wrestlemania 18 too i think when like drowning pool or some like saliva or some shit played like the beginning and they showed all the promos for like the the matches and stuff like that that just has triple h written all over it um but we saw this uh tag title uh set up and we were like yeah no uh yeah. we had the nxt tag titles um on the line when uh champions the authors of pain uh went up against sanity um for our perspective it looked like it was heel heel sanity kind of came off like face but we don't really know what's going on with that again we have not watched nxt and nine weeks or however eight weeks or some shit so i uh, don't really know what's going on there um sanity came out looked like it was going to be the two bigger guys but eric young ended up tagging in and joined the match it was kind of random um i just i ah, just the authors of pain cannot have a good match unless they're in there with really really quality talent um and they weren't in with really quality talent so this match definitely suffered um because i don't give a fuck about sanity that's just a tna ripoff yeah. shitty gimmick um, just don't care about Eric Young or really anybody involved um, in that whole deal. Um, yeah, they did like the spot at the end where they sandwich squashed fucking uh, Nikki Six. Nikki Six, we kept Six. going to Nikki Six. We kept trying, trying to say what she looks like. And we kept saying, God, Nikki Six looks like. I'm like, dude, it's not Nikki Six. It's Nikki Cross. We just kept saying Nikki Six. It was like yeah. that's fucking random. But uh, Nikki Cross, they like smashed her over the table and did that spot. And then Sanity won, and we were like, okay, just whatever. Um, there really, um, until after this matchup, um, there really was no, you know, uh, like quality talent really going on in the tag team division in NXT because DIY broke up. Um, you started bringing up a lot of the talent over the last year, you know, to the main roster, the American Alphas and those kind of guys. Um, you really don't have the talent really in the division until we got towards the tail end of this matchup where we had um, Eric Young get the pinfall or one of the Sanity dudes or whatever. And um, we had a surprise to us. May not, maybe not been a surprise to you guys, you guys out there watching the show, because supposedly they de debuted on a, a TV taping um, on one of the previous NXTs. But fucking Red Dragon, uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly yeah. uh, came down to the ring, uh, whooped some ass, uh, took out the Authors of Pain, uh, posed with the titles, and we were shitting ourselves. Like we uh, totally did not see this shit coming. Um, and this is kind of one of the big reasons why we took this exile was kind of for things like this to be surprised genuinely we had no yeah. idea like we didn't have a fucking clue this was going to go down uh, i didn't even know these guys were signed we don't even know if they are signed but obviously it's looking like they are um but fish and o'reilly one of the best tag teams in the fucking world red dragon is awesome they're solid fucking a uh, core fucking tag team that could go in there and work with anybody um a solid you know chemistry with the two of them um so that's some great shit for wwe to snag up you know a, a quality um, you know, tag team that has worked across the world and had outstanding matches with a lot of different tag teams and a lot of different style tag teams. Um, but sitting there coming in and, and taking out the Authors of Pain looking like they're going to be going for the tag titles. Hopefully they get the fucking straps on them soon because, um, yeah, they're outstanding. So that was a fucking awesome. And that's one of these things. It's like 
on some of the parts of this card. You know, some of the quality of things were, were not amazing, but they were still some good stuff. But even when they weren't, you had something that made you feel like, oh, shit, that was awesome. Like, yeah. after something that happened that maybe wasn't that great, you at least had something in between that made you feel like, kept you captivated and made you, right. still made you entertained with what was going on. And this was a perfect time to have something like that happen because this tag match was underwhelming and obviously not that good, but you had Red Dragon come in there and you're like, fuck, shot of adrenaline straight to you. Um, and and re really, you know, um, the the big feeling that I got out of this, I'm sure Ryan did too, was the, um, the rejuvenation that NXT feels like now because we genuinely had the feeling before when we were watching. It was kind of a little lackluster. It was still some good stuff here and there, but the, the product was kind of feeling not stale, but a little just kind of, it was just there. Underwhelming. Like Underwhelming, yeah. exactly. But now, after this show, it's like, fuck, I cannot wait to see what happens next with NXT. Yeah. Um, with stuff we'll get to the end here. But, um, you know, a, a great utilization of that, that beatdown and making, uh, you know, excitement after something that we weren't really kind of giving a shit about. So Red Dragon coming in for the beatdown. But Sanity, uh, new tag champions, but I could give a fuck about that. It was really the um, introduction to Red Dragon for us in NXT. Like I said, I think they, deb they debuted on a previous taping, but awesome for... Um, us to see that uh, go down at this uh, takeover show. Yeah, I mean, uh, this this match was trash. Yeah. Uh, I, I I mean, I don't really care about either one of these teams. Uh, they're both boring. Um, I think one of the things that uh, that happens in NXT is um, they're a hodgepodge of of um, a lot of things going on in the wrestling world. Um, they kind of just pluck things from different th areas and in different promotions and different things and. Uh, this felt like a subpar TNA Impact yep. uh, tag team match. That yep. was just that you didn't care about the teams. Yeah, it was like a it was like a match between like fucking like serotonin and like fucking some other just just the newly franchised Naturals maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I don't know. The team Naturals. Team Canada. Team Canada. There you go. Scott yeah. Demore. Scott Demore. Yeah, that. Yeah, but you never thought you'd hear that name on yeah, the show. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, no, this this sucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, and I don't care about either one of these teams. Um, I mean, I think the authors of pain could be good. They knew definitely. I mean, they had. Are. They've. I had think they looked super hard ass. Yeah. When they come to the ring, they look opposing. They look super hard ass. Um, there's there's a difference like, there's a difference between like a team like American Alpha where they are a, they, where they were well they were a team, um, where they were two individual guys. But they came together as a team. Right. When I look at the authors of pain, I think I don't I don't know which ones Razor and which ones Rakem or Akem or whatever their names. Rakem, Akem, Razor. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't know which ones which. Uh, right. um, they're 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 not individual people to me. Right. They're they're just two dudes that that are just like yeah. connected as one, and I'm like there's no personality for either one of them. They're just two big dudes that. They're like two shitty Banes. That's right. <laughs> I don't know. Right. I mean, I'm not trying to shit on them, but I am. You are, yeah. yeah. But, and then and then Sanity's trash. Yeah, so it's bad. So I, I don't like anything to do with any of them. Right. Um, so, but yeah, the Red Dragon debut was pretty great. Um, like I said, I didn't know anything about it. Um, right. I hadn't seen anything from Kyle O'Reilly or Bobby Fish in months. Quite some time. Um, almost half a year. I hadn't, I hadn't heard anything. So I didn't know they were trying to get signed or what was going on. But that's great because they're, they're one of the best tag teams in the world, and that yep. was cool to see them. And that was not the last time we would see Red Dragon on this show. Uh, but we'll get to that later. Um, God, fucking, oh, Jesus Christ. Let me tame my boner really quick. Um, next fucking matchup. Now, when we saw them play the um, the beginning package and we got some of the introductions to the matches and shit, uh, again, the tag titles we saw, and we were like, eh, whatever. Um, and then we saw a promo package that featured Aleister Black and Hideo Itami. And that's when we were like, Fuck, this is going to be insane. Um, yeah. So next matchup, uh, we had just my fucking boy, Aleister Black, going up against fucking Hideo Itami. Jesus. Um, Fuck. Yeah, I mean, the, this is one of the the hardest entrances I've seen oh in my a God. minute. Um, Aleister Black is 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 gross, dude. God, He's so his, good. His gimmick is gross. His Everything about the way he... He carries himself, his appearance. He's like a, um, not a tacky vampire, but he's like a weird tacky vampire. The way that I've coined it, and I've told, uh, I've like told biker guy. I've told uh, Robert about this. He reminds me of if you had a love child between CM Punk and The Undertaker. I think Literally, that's a, I think that's a good. That is what it feels like, and that just is fucking 
just balls out insanely badass. Like, so fucking sick. Yeah. Ugh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, they, they, they cater to him and his character very well. Yes, they did. They, they had that Code Orange band play, him, play a song for him to the ring. They had him like lean up like he's a vampire they had uh his when they when his name pops up on the screen it's all like in these weird cryptic like font italic yeah. cryptic font and it's crazy um he looks great he, he looks the part he's great in the ring um let's not overshadow a day here because right. the right. thing about him and we've me and him have talked about this is um he, he's kind of lost his, his steam and his luster when he when he came into nxt because he keeps getting hurt um he, he, when he comes to the ring there it there it doesn't feel like there's anything special about him. Um, he's just the Japanese guy. I mean, obviously you know him. His name, he, he's Kenta. Um, and you've seen him in Ring of Honor or in Noah or wherever he's been over the last, you know, 10 years. You know he can work. You know he's one of the, was one of the best in the world um, for a period of time. Um, I think he's just very much slowed down. Um, he was good in this match, but um, to me, I just don't care. I don't care about him. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't care about him. Um, I would have been just as fine with Alistair Black against Cassius Ono here, oh, or Jesus, against yeah. Roderick Strong here. Um, this was kind of this this whole ordeal where there was like this, uh, who's gonna kick the other guy to death more okay. kind of thing. That was the kind of thing about this. Um, wasn't this the match where uh, Jr. came out too? Jr. called this match. Yep. They had Jr. come out for one yep. match, yep. which was random. Right. Um, but this was pretty stiff uh, early in the match. Uh, Alistair Black got busted open. Yep. His nose was busted open, and he was bleeding pretty decently. He, they both took some really good strikes from each other. They both took some really good hits. Yeah, it was um, funny because uh, I think Drake uh, Drake Younger was the ref for this match, and it's just funny seeing Drake Younger put on the little gloves and try to attend somebody yeah. that's bleeding because yeah. Drake Younger like the king of fucking death yeah, matches yeah, and shit. Of, and... If you don't know, if you don't know who Drake <laughs> Younger is, he's a, ref, a referee for WWE, and he re- referees a lot of matches now. He's very tan now. Yeah, but right. um, it's like a burnt hot dog. But he he he's a good worker, and yeah. he's one of the kings of hardcore. <laughs> right, like he literally his like death matches. And when CZW. you see it, it's surprising to see Drake Younger with a face that doesn't have blood on it. Yeah, because <laughs> that's usually what he's. Yeah. But it's just so funny to him, like like tapering and like try or, uh, trying to like help out somebody with like the blood with the gloves on. It's just fuck like corny right. to see that. It's funny. Um. But yeah, this was this was good. This was a good match. I wouldn't say it was incredible or amazing, right. but it was a good, solid striking style match that you don't really see in WWE very much because they don't they don't go hit each other, you know, like they do in New Japan or wherever. Um, but yeah, this was this was good, and Aleister Black gets the got the win on this. I I cannot get over to you guys how much I fucking love Aleister Black. Like I literally words do not describe how much I love this fucking gimmick. Um, just everything about him just screams fucking edgy and like it factor like it just screams it like it's just so new age and modern um it might be hard for some to get behind it because it is a little edgy it has like kind of the demonic tones and shit which i'm fucking all about it i think it's fucking just sick i just think it's fucking awesome and i I, you know you don't really see the the crowd really react you kind of get that like uh spectacle vibe from him Mm -hmm. um a lot of the times when you would see uh you know his entrances like people are really awe inspired by his entrances and um his presence um because he has it man he has that presence he feels like a fucking like villain in like a fucking movie like it just looks fucking rad dude it's like so badass Mm -hmm. just cannot get over the performance by code orange playing uh alistair black's theme song was fucking sick having him come up and fucking come behind the band and then come out just fucking it's just unbelievable it's just so fucking badass i can't get over how fucking much i love this fucking game it's my favorite gimmick in all of wrestling right now bar none um but yeah this is some good stuff um i, I do think one of the things that we talked about um because i agree with what ryan said about it tommy um he's a hell of a talented guy he really kind of it's just a misfortune of uh he had a lot of buzz coming in when he first came in nxt a lot of people were behind him had a lot of injuries um things like that kind of and we've seen it a lot lately when you know when you get injured and you fade off um a little bit people just don't give a shit about you anymore yeah. uh, we saw a lot of same thing that happened to uh baylor when baylor got injured dude his team fell off like he like was hot as all get out he got injured and then he came back and i don't know what's going on with him now obviously but um we talked about it in the past how you just kind of lose a little bit of steam and then just it just keeps going it's hard to gain that back um but one thing that we talked about with the tommy is um guys like us and i'm sure a lot of the guys out there you guys out there watching obviously the more 
um, you know, hardcore based wrestling fan that pay attention to the stuff over in Japan or in the Indies and stuff like that, you know about Kenta. You know how talented he is and, you know, his history and things like that. When he came in, we know about that. Um, but he never had the chance to show that to the um, average day, um, what the casual fan. Casual the fan. average day casual fan to prove who Kenta is all about and what Kenta is all about. And then he got injured and then people just forget about him and then you just kind of are lost and you just kind of can't regain that momentum. Um, so it's kind of hard and because he literally had zero reaction when he came out yeah. and has had zero reaction since he's returned from his injuries. Um, and it's, I think they should repackage him with footage from Japan and that'd from be cool. Ring of that'd Honor be cool. and stuff. Yeah, and I think it's... it's, it's, in, it's the ring, in the ring with like Daniel Bryan and... And guys that, or maybe put him with like a Paul Heyman or somebody that can talk for him and maybe yeah. pr- like pimp him up or somebody mm-hmm. that could like really get him over, um, because he is a talented guy. Um, he does look, uh, you know, um, has worn down a bit. Obviously, he's been in wrestling for a long time and has worked a really stiff style for you know fifteen, ten, whatever years it's been. Um, so yeah, but uh, really, in all honesty, a very you know, dream type setup match with the kicking style, the striking style mm-hmm. of these guys. Um, I think it kind of started out slow and then picked up over time, and then um, Alistair Black hitting that that black mass kick, which is fucking gross. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I really, ho- I I haven't been, you know, seen a presentation of a guy and have seen a guy come in and have not had wanted more for this character. Like, I really want this character to fucking shoot off. I want people to get behind it because it's fucking just fucking awesome like it's just so fucking good and it's different and um his look is just obviously there you look at the guy he has a stature um who can go in there with somebody and and you know he has the um the presence and, and everything i mean he's re- he really has all of it um and i just can't say enough about alistair black i fucking love it um but yeah alistair black getting the uh, win in that match against Hideo tommy with the black mask kick um some good stuff there um Next up, uh, we had the NXT Women's Championship on the line. Uh, we're looking forward to this time once we saw the video package. It was champion Asuka um, on her 504th day, I think it was, yeah. as women's champion, which is fucking crazy, um, winning it back at the TakeOver in Dallas, which me and my wife attended back in before WrestleMania 32, um, a fucking year and a half ago. Um, going up against Ember Moon. Uh, this one really looked predictable to us. We thought it looked just yeah. in the fucking bag for Ember to Moon to finally get the title here. We had the um, comeback kind of story for her after her loss to Asuka at the last, I think it was the last TakeOver show. Um, coming back in, Asuka doing her little heel run and really pimping up the streak that she's been on. Not to mention um, the solar eclipse. Not to mention exactly what I was going to bring up, the solar eclipse coming up on Monday. Um, her finish called the eclipse, uh, Ember Moon, like Jesus fucking Christ, can the stars not align any fucking better yeah. uh, for, for it to be her time? Pun and, intended. And exactly, pun intended. Um, for it to be her time. It made total fucking sense. Um, to put the title on Ember Moon here, and they didn't do it, um, and it kind of caught us by surprise. Um, it was a great match. It was really, really good stuff. It was one of the best women's matches we've seen in WWE in a long time, um, yeah. at least for what we've seen. Now that we don't know what's happened over the last two months, but um, kind of surprising. We really thought it would be the right time here. Asuka, I think, is a, um, a a huge piece that can be added to the women's division up on either SmackDown or Raw. Doesn't fucking matter. Um, because they need her. I, I really think that she could be worthwhile on either show um, and immediately get thrown into some great, um, you know, uh, matchups that we could possibly see. Can't wait to see an Asuka and a Charlotte or Asuka and, and Sasha or Bailey or, you know, uh, Becky. Um, so, and there's tons of potential there. And, and she's a fresh um, character that uh, it will work great on the main roster once she finally gets there. But um, continuing, continuing her role here, I'm our question is who the fuck is gonna beat her like we don't know what's going on with maybe the may young classic could it be somebody coming out of that that maybe ends up taking the title from her that would kind of make sense um but it just made so much sense to just kind of um put the the woman the nxt women's division on ember moon's back and just kind of run with her for a little bit um she's talented she has a good gimmick um, she's, you know, pretty cool. It's like, you got a lot of stuff behind her that, that really works and she's talented. I mean, it's just, it made a lot of fucking sense to just move Asuka out of NXT, push her up to the main roster in the next, you know, tonight or fucking in the next couple of days or a couple of weeks and, you know, let Ember Moon run with the title. But, um, they didn't do that here. It was some good stuff. Um, we had a lot of teases. They had, um, Ember Moon hit that 
the jumping fucking stunner uh, clips thing or whatever. Um, they had like Sasha, Bailey, and um, Becky out um, in the crowd for this one. Um, so they made it feel like a big deal, and, and it did feel like a big deal. It felt uh, like a really solid, um, you know, built up story. Again, we didn't see it; we just saw it from the video package, but. Um, it just made total sense for us to think that, and this wasn't one of those things where it was like bad to be predictable because it made sense. It just made a lot of sense for Ember Moon to come out of this, but it didn't happen. But um, good matchup here, some really good stuff from from these women and and from the women's division. Uh, but Asuka continuing now her 505 day um, NXT Women's Championship run, which is a, a hell of a fucking run and crazy number to think of for a title run i can't think i mean punks was like 434 so i mean that was built up like a motherfucker and this kind of not really even talked about that much and it's crazy ass fucking long so um obviously congrats oscar for that fucking title run again we talked about last night i mean there really wasn't a lot to really go with uh, besides her but ember moon was a, a the number one um option to go with didn't go with it there but still some great stuff and oscar still the nxt women's champion yeah yeah i mean this is great. Uh, this is a good, good women's match, man. Um, it's been a minute since they've had a, a good one, at least that I've seen. And and uh, um, my girl, my girl Ember Moon just just didn't just didn't yeah, walk man. away with the title. I I don't know what they're doing with Oscar. I, I'd assume that you know the, the the her coming to one of you know the main roster soon was was a, was going to be a, a, a done deal. Um, but I guess not. I guess maybe they'll wait. They're going to wait until maybe the May Young Classic, and whoever wins the May Young Classic will probably get a title shot. Um, at her the and, next and takeover the, or something. Yeah, the next takeover, which will probably be Mania or something. Mm, they'll probably be one around um, probably Survivor Series. They okay. had one at Survivor Series last year. So then, yeah, that that yeah, that might be the case. November then. probably. But yeah, I mean, I, that's that's what I would assume that whoever wins that is gonna probably, probably. take the belt from her. So probably. I mean, that's is what it is. But yeah, this Hopefully was good stuff Candle here. Soray. What? Hopefully it's Candle Soray. Yeah, Candle Soray. <laughs> that'd, that'd, be, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, there's another. Uh, Japanese, Japanese women's yeah. wrestler that that's pretty popular. That's gonna get a lot of buzz too. Ky- yeah. K- Kyrie or K- Kyrie, or, I don't I don't know how to pronounce name, but um, that'd be cool too. But yeah, this was this was great. Like I said, and uh, I love Ember Moon, love Asuka. Uh, the thing about Asuka that I wanted to mention was, like compared to now to where when she first started, um, when she debuted what whatever a year and a half ago or whatever it was, um, she looks very comfortable yeah. in a American ring now. Unlike Shinsuke Nakamura. Un- unlike Shinsuke Nakamura, who looks, who was very awkward. I don't know if he's gotten better. Right. Um, yeah. Good luck tonight. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Good luck yeah. in pressing us tonight. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Fuck. the only thing that's gonna be great about that is if he takes the title and then. God, what if we get a cash in? Corbin. Right out Corbin. Uh, yeah. I don't even know if Corbin cashed in or not. We don't. So. Yeah. We. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Or if, if he still holds the briefcase. Or if he holds we don't it at know. all. I have no idea. Um, but uh, but yeah. I mean, it's just is what it is and, and I think Oscar's time for her to move up. I think she would be fine on a main roster. Yep. So uh next up, uh we had the main event here. Um we had the NXT championship on line when champion Bobby Roode. Uh boring boring root Bobby boring Bobby Root. Boring uh, Oh shit, Bobby Root. I'm sorry. Borean Boreas. Boreas 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 For I will have taken a nap for I will go to sleep. I will go to sleep during your entrance you are Boreas Boreas God, we are going to get some hate on that one. Fuck Jesus. Bobby Roode, yeah, dude. Straight up. Never thought I would say that ever. Um, the NXT Championship from Alliance Champion Bobby Roode went up against just Hard Dick Viking. Hard Dick. Jesus fucking. Hard Dick Viking fucking, Drew McIntyre. Scottish Hard Dick. Hard guy. Fucking guy Drew McIntyre. Get it. Jesus. Get it, boy. Oh, God. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you about. Let me tell let me you about, about a man named Drew McIntyire. Let me tell you about my boy Drew Mac. Drewy, Drew, Drew Mackey. Drew Mack boy. Drew Mack boy. All right, listen, boy. Drew McIntyre is hard as fuck. fuck. He's hard. Hard guy. And we're not making fun of this. No. Legit. H&R Drew McIntyre. 3Ds. Drew McIntyre legitimately could be the next major star of this company. I'm not even kidding. Not, not NXT. Right. WWE. Fuck he it. looked fucking incredible. Did. His entrance looked good. Yeah. His look looked good. Like he his looked, look looked good. His look looked good. Everything, yeah. everything about it was Mac and tarted, dude. It was Mac and he, fucking watching him for thirty seconds made me Mac and tired. Yeah, dude, right? I'm t- it made me Mac and fucking erect. Mac, Mac and, that didn't even rhyme. Near right. I wanted some Mac and cheese <laughs> after seeing that shit. Uh, but all in all seriousness, yes. yes. Uh, the the what I got out of this because I had not seen Drew McIntyre in NXT. Yeah, at all? No. Mm-mm. Wow. I hadn't seen one match of him in NXT. 
Um, I had seen some stuff when he was in Impact and Impact Wrestling and PWG and some indie promotions, and he looked like he was still good and, and moved around well and gotten better. And God, he looked jacked, dude. He looked bigger than he used to look. Yeah. Um, and uh, the one thing he talked about was, um, which kind of tied into his real life story uh, with what happened when he got fired and all that stuff that was going on. Um, uh, you know, with Bobby Roode feeling entitled and all, and all this. And he was that same way. And he was the chosen one and all this right. and blah, blah, blah. And they had a really good video package. He he now looks like um, a grizzled veteran. I think that's what we kind of said. Not not grizzled as in, not a veteran as in, you know, um, like he's old. But like he's, he's he understands the business. He understands has it. earned it. He's like, earned where he's at. Earned, earned that you know, he's starting at the, the, you know, ground floor again and coming through NXT and... and, and um, he's humbled, yeah. and and you can see actually see that uh, in him when he wrestles. It's not just a character storyline or anything right. like that. But um, I think I think Drew McIntyre is great. I think his entrance was great. All we're doing is talking about Drew McIntyre. Oh yeah, because we were bored about the other guy. So yeah, yeah. You know, I, mean, yeah, well, I mean we haven't even talked about the fuck. match. The match itself was was pretty decent. I mean um, it wasn't incredible or anything like I said, but uh, it was good. And um, the thing I got out of this more than anything is God. Uh, other than Drew McIntyre being great, is Bobby Roode is boring as fuck, dude. Yes, I don't, I don't give a shit about his gimmick. Like, I think his song is trash. I, I, I just think his entire gimmick is bad. I think it's a bad parody of a of a eighties Ric Flair, Gorgeous George, whatever. Gorgeous George is that the right guy? The word. I mean, yeah, yeah. Those George guys is. who wear the Rick Roods, those guys who wears the robes and all that, and right. doing the whole good looking, you know, blah blah. blah. It's just it's a it's a to me it's a bad it's a bad meme of an '80s wrestler, right? And it's kind of one of those things that's supposed to come off serious, but it comes off like a spoof. Yeah, and then it just in, is in the middle, and it's like that gray area, and you're like, why should I even give a fuck? Like, yeah, because it's, it's like you don't. Are you supposed to laugh at it, or are you supposed to make like make it look like it's badass? Because yeah. it's neither. Like it's just in the middle, and it's just trash. Not to mention how not to mention that the gimmick is not good. No, it's boring. It's it's not it's not boring. It's just not it's just not good. It's no. it just sucks. Bobby Roode is 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 so boring in yes. the ring. He like he is a straight bore fest. He yep. there's no redeeming qualities about his wrestling qual like anything that he does in the ring. He doesn't do anything special. Um, nothing. He's to, very ABC. Very, very ABC. And not in a good what was way. what was you said? He was a not a poor man's triple. He H. was just a bad version of triple like the bad times triple H. Yeah, like like, 2000, like 2003 triple yeah. H. Like I love triple H more than anybody, but we know there was some bad triple H years uh, match quality wise. Uh, Jesus. I mean, this is what it feels like. That's what those fucking Scott Steiner fucking Triple H matches felt like. That's what Bobby Roode feels like. Every it also time didn't help that, 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 I mean, I don't think the crowd didn't care about Drew McIntyre. I just yeah. felt like that they didn't care about this match. I feel like they care more about, like, Bobby Roode's entrance than they cared about anything else in this entire thing. And yeah. then they were just kind of, like, bored with everything. Because Bobby Roode doesn't excite you when he's in the ring. It's kind of yeah. one of those things, like, everybody wears his t-shirts and everybody brings glory signs. And all they do is just mark out for fucking three minutes, and then they just sit on their hands because they have nothing else to be excited about. You're right. You don't. Um, but you have something to be excited about with Drew McIntyre because he is rejuvenated. Uh, he feels fresh. He did a nice dive spot. Where yeah, I was dude. Like, God, he's like athletic huge. as fuck, and he's like six seven. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Are you kidding me? His, and then we were gonna go back because it's kind of actually like we were talking about entrances being more important. But his entrance was great on this. Yeah, he had it was this awesome. Scottish bagpipe people. Yeah, it was like these New York. It's like a New York like drummer and bagpipe dudes that like, came out and like oh, they, played like a awesome. Scottish fucking thing. And then they had him come out and it yeah. just looked hard as fuck. But anyway, Drew McIntyre wins here. Yes. He won the title and he won it clean and yeah. NXT new NXT champion uh, Drew McIntyre. So we'll see him run with the belt for a minute. Um, for a minute. For a minute. Oh yeah. For but just a, maybe just a minute. Maybe, we never know. Maybe just a minute. There. But. uh... So at the end here, uh, Red Dragon comes out again and go jumps in the corner, and they're looking at Drew McIntyre, and he's like, "What? Why is Why is Red Dragon out here? Out here?" And you know, blah blah. blah. And then you see Adam Cole, baby, baby. Adam Cole, baby, baby. Oh God! Oh God! All oh, the semen is real. Oh God! Oh God! <laughs> Adam Cole, fuck! Run through the crowd. Jump in the ring and jump Drew McIntyre. God, could this have ended any better? Any better. We sat there and I said, like, okay, here's some dream scenarios. Bobby Roode just retains whatever, no one gives a fuck. And then Adam Cole, Adam Cole comes out. Because we knew Adam Cole signed. We didn't know that. That was, like, the one news thing I have known. That's it. It was the one news thing that I knew. I didn't even know Ric Flair almost died. I didn't even know that. I knew Adam Cole signed with NXT because I give a fuck about that. 
That was like the one thing that we knew. So we were sitting there like, Bobby Roode retains, and then they have Adam Cole come out and debut as a face and, and take him out. Or Drew McIntyre retains, and our Drew McIntyre wins. That was like our the only two dream scenarios. Not only did we get Adam Cole fucking debuting, but we got Drew McIntyre debuting, and we had the fucking beat down by Adam Cole. So it's like just dream scenario after every, fucking everything. Was, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, and then they had Red Dragon and, uh, and Adam Cole standing in the ring right there next to each other just looking in the camera. Uh, Adam Cole holding the NXT title. I mean, that's how you do it. That is how you do it. If you bring in new guys in, dude, people know who Adam Cole is. He, is a, he was a part of being the elite. On YouTube, which is blown up. If you do not know what this is, we don't know how you're watching this. <laughs> yeah, it's the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, right. and Adam Cole was on there, and um, uh, Marty Scurll, and this, this, you know, Cody. Yeah, Cody Rhodes, and, and and all these guys from Bullet Club. Great, funny show. Yeah. Uh, super interesting. Gives you a capture into their life and, and all this, and it's awesome. Adam Cole was on there, and and I think that that um, the right idea for NXT here, or just for Adam Cole and Red Dragon, which to almost do a little bit of like a spin-off or a spoof off of the Elite, which is Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks. I think that would be a good like little setup for NXT and for to get all these guys over. Um, just have this three man group. Obviously the clear there's a clear leader, which is Cole will probably be. Yeah. And the other guy, you know, Red Dragon will be the tag team and, and by the next probably by the next takeover They'll all be champions. They'll all be the champions. Or they'll, no both, problem with that. they'll both win the all. They're all win the titles. Yep. Um, and I mean that'll be great. Adam Cole, if you wait and see and watch him cut promos, he's oh, fantastic, God. dude. Jeez. He's gonna man. If you get a chance to to make it to that, jump up to that main roster, and man, he's great on the mic, dude. He's so good. Um, he's great in the ring. He's great. He's great. He has so many redeeming qualities. Um, and and this was a great way to finish this. And this is this is a good start for us to jump back into wrestling because no shit. because the thing about these NXT takeover shows is. Even if the matches, the match qualities are not always there, the the takeover shows always feel special. There's always something big or special about something happening. They had a band, you know, to the ring. They had um, the entrance with Drew McIntyre. They had, you know, the uh, you know titles change hands. Good, you know, good women match, good women matches, and good rivalries and and, and uh, storyline storyline yeah. developments and surprise uh, debuts and. That, that's that's it's it's like that's a what you want in a race, wrestling show. That, right, that's, right. Those are all the qualities. for big wrestling shows. That's what you want. That's and, what you want. Man. And, yeah, and if if and if this is how you want, you know, this is how NXT is. This is look at how you book your NXT shows and look at how they're being set up. This is how you want to see main roster. your main roster and right. your big shows. Like a, SummerSlam is the second biggest WWE show of the year. It should be fucking nuts. Like it it should, should this show the should shit. be this show should be great right and i hope it is i hope it i hope it's better than wrestlemania which is yeah. wwe's best show of the year right so far and i mean and i can't and that's not saying much and that yeah and i can't that's even not say that's much. not even one of the best shows of the year like no. period because it's, it's it was just a good it was decent right you know right. um and i hope this is better like i said we only know the one match so right um and it could surprise could yeah. surprise can't 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 hate it too much you know um it's different but um this was great, and I'm glad that we we decided to watch this and um and and go through and and see everything that happened because it was good. You know, there was a lot of good stuff that happened here, and it made sure. me want to continue to watch uh, New Japan or not New Japan. <laughs> Maybe didn't watch NXT. I am right. watching a lot of New Japan. Yeah, though. for sure. All right, so let's first start. I'll go back to this match. So, um, as we said, as Ryan said, we both talked about it. Bobby Roode bores the fuck out of us. Like, I just, there's no redeeming qualities. It's just fucking board fest. It is what it is. Uh, people could love that gimmick all they want, but there's no redeeming qualities when he gets in between the ropes, in my opinion. And I, I, I am one of the guys, we loved Bobby Roode, dude. Yeah, he I was the shit back in 2012, like when he was winning, like won the title in TNA. And the he, Factor thing. And he was doing the Ed Factor thing, and it wasn't over the top. And Even it was when just he was felt, with Beer It just felt like TNA, Triple H. Like, that's what it felt like. Now it just seems like a like a like we were talking about like a spoof of Ric Flair or like a fucking yeah like he's an shit. '80s wrestler meme. I hate yeah, it. I hate it's it. It's so bad, and lo so many people think it's great, and I'm just like, dude, you're just not you're just disconnected. Um, but yeah, so fuck that. Drew McIntyre just looked like a stud as soon as he stepped out. Just looked yeah, like a fucking stud. He's a stud. Like 
he even when he was in there we were showing they showed the flashbacks and he looked so fucking young back in 09 i mean shit that was eight years ago like that's crazy um and you know he was a he was a guy that we looked at as being like a future kind of guy you know ben said it too i mean the future champion or whatever they booked it as i think it's why um, they gave him another opportunity as a chosen one yeah and it could have been because they see a lot of the qualities there but he Potential. went and like what we said is instead of um shoving a gimmick on somebody Drew McIntyre has the organic feel of feeling like a grizzled veteran. Um, he has, as soon as he comes in, he looks like a guy that's been well traveled, um, has paid his dues, has earned coming back into WWE and getting this opportunity to be NXT champion. He looks like it, it's an organic tr transition to coming back into WWE. It's what it feels like. Um, and it, it's a well deserved win here. Whether the crowd gave a shit, I don't care. Fuck the New York crowd, whatever. Um, I don't care. Uh, Drew McIntyre deserves to, to have this opportunity to run as the NXT champion. Um, but sweet baby fucking Jesus, when we first saw the bug in the corner, because we saw the fucking the, the NXT little going off the air thing, and I was like, fuck, man, I really I really wanted to see Adam Cole. Because the first thing I said when the show turned on, I was like, God, I just want Adam Cole out of this show. That's what I want. Um, and so the little bug went up, and we started to see the crowd get riled up, and we're like, fucking A, finally. And we saw Red Dragon in the corner. We're like, holy shit, they're going to put him with Red Dragon. And once he came in and did the beatdown, it's like, I have said this time and time again. I feel like Adam Cole has the potential with everything he has. He literally has always seemed to me like the second coming of Shawn Michaels. Like, he has everything. He is a five-tool wrestler. He can talk his ass off and get himself over face or heel um, he, literally every time he cuts a promo, I'm glued to the fucking screen because he just can talk his ass off. Yeah. Um, he's great in the ring. He has an amazing look. He looks like a fucking star. When you when he puts your, his eyes on his fuck, on the fucking TV, he has that connection that Punk did. Whenever Punk lay, laid his eyes on the fucking camera, and he makes you connect, man. He just has that feel that he, he knows he has control of what he's fucking doing. Um, it, he's just, he just has everything. Um, the charisma is just oozing out of him. I mean, it just fucking endless potential with Adam Cole, and he's only 28 years old. Um, so I, there's just so much they can do with him. I just hope that they do it right. I hope they just let him be himself and just let him do his thing. Um, let him get over. You don't really even need to do anything. Just let, give him the opportunity. He did it right here. He had him debut in the main event after a, a title change and vaulted him up into the main event scene. Perfect. Good job. The same thing they did with Kevin Owens when he came into the scene and turned on Sami Zayn the first night he was there. It was in the opening match, came out in the main event, turned on Sami Zayn, went off from there, and was champion within like three months. Um, that's the same thing that probably is going to end up happening with Adam Cole and with Red Dragon because I love the combination here. I think it helps get over Red Dragon more because there's a lot of hubbub and a lot of um, backing behind Cole, obviously, because there was a lot of people that wanted to see Adam Cole, uh, me being one of them, Ryan being one of them, wanted to see Adam Cole on the big stage um, of WWE, NXT, whatever the case is, because that's what I say every single time we sit down here and we watch a Ring of Honor show and I see fucking Adam Cole come out, I'm like, why is that motherfucker not on Monday nights? It just blows my mind that it took this long for Adam Cole to get to WWE, because I just he has star written all fucking over him. It just blows my mind. Um, so, so fucking deserving to see these guys in here. Red Dragon 2 cannot, um, you know, overlook them as being obviously one of the best tag teams in the world. So seeing them in there was great, but fucking Adam Cole. Awesome. Just fucking awesome to see this fucking debut. And like we were talking about, this is what you want out of a wrestling show. Whether every single match was fucking, you know, we didn't have fucking five four-star matches and a fucking match of the year contender, but you have quality work that you can still sit there and be entertained by the wrestling you have the production level everything that felt big about this show you had the the live fucking performance by the code orange and playing the, the to the the fucking ring for alistair black um the promo packages the special announcers with jr and Corey graves coming in and you had yeah. the the special returns and the, the debuts and or not returns but debuts and introductions for guys and vaulting them into um a, a premier level into this product for NXT right off the bat. Don't fucking come in and have them show a little promo package like, hi, I'm Adam Cole, and I'm going to be good talent. I'm a young guy that's going to pay my... Like, no, none of that shit like they did with Punk and ECW and wasted his fucking time for fucking five years. You just vault the motherfucker up because you know how good he is. We know how good he is, and your crowd knows how good he is. So just put him there. 
he just you know, fucking right up on the top shelf because that's where he belongs. Yeah. Um, and that's the way you do it. And that's because Triple H gets the fucking game because he is the fucking game. He knows this shit, dude. And once he takes over the fucking main roster, this shit's going to be like that too. And I cannot fucking wait for that um, because he just handles his product like it's his baby. I mean, he takes care of it, he nurtures it, and he does it the right fucking way because he just knows what he's fucking doing. Um, so yeah, just good shit all over the place. I mean, from the match quality, which was some good stuff here and there, to the surprise stuff, um, that was some awesome stuff, to fucking Adam Cole, baby, making his fucking debut with WWE at the end of this show. Fucking awesome stuff. Um, so we are extremely glad that we made the decision to watch this show. Um, we did get one match totally spoiled. Um, which even I, I think is probably a good thing. Now we at least know that we don't know how it came to be. We don't know how it came to be. We don't know no the storyline. We have no fucking idea who would fucking book this shit. But um, yeah, so we don't have, know anything else. It's a four-hour fucking show, so there's a lot of shit on this show. Um, so yeah, we're excited to see what's gonna be going down. But we are very glad um, that we uh, made the decision to watch this takeover show because we were rewarded um, with that um, with that plan and uh, with watching this show. So. Um, the next time you will be seeing us is for our um, SummerSlam review. Um, I don't know when the hell I'm going to upload this video. Probably maybe uh, later on today. It's Sunday, SummerSlam day, so I don't know if it's going to go up then. But next time you'll be seeing us is um, for the SummerSlam review, and we hope we get some good shit like we got on we got on this show. So um, but this will wrap up our NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 review from my partner Ryan. I am J-Man, and thank you for watching another edition of Pro Wrestling Pulse, the pulse of the professional wrestling world, baby. <laughs>